bien. Good morning, folks. Welcome to summertime bass fishing. That's the way I like to see them come up and get up. Buzz bait or a topwater bait early in the morning. A tactic that is especially good and one of my favorites, I really enjoy fishing them, and that's topwater. You know, we all like topwater because you see the fish bite the bait, and you know, they're just exciting lures to use. And not only that, but the time of day that you use these, a lot of times is totally different from the time of day when you're gonna catch fish on plastic worms. The Zara Spook to me is probably one of the number one topwater baits for bringing bass up out of deep cover. Uh, a ledge, a bluff, or something that's under the surface of the water, down there 10 to 20 foot, especially on your clear water lakes, this is an absolute pr good producer. Probably my favorite of all topwater baits, the Pop R. You know, this little bait right here has accounted for many a bass, and I've, I've caught my share on it. And I plan on catching some at this lake on this lure right here. And uh, it, it's very good worked around rocks, uh, shallow weed beds. Really, it does not have a place that it does not catch bass. It'll catch fish anywhere. Another topwater bait to me that's very productive, and sometimes they'll bite these style baits over the others, and that's your propeller type baits. This particular bait here is a boy howdy. Another one that I'm sure you're familiar with is a devil's horse. Anything that has a prop on one end or the other, or maybe both ends, it creates a, more of a disturbance on the surface of the water. And when you've got a lot of little fry in a lake, that's when they're really effective. Right after the bass have spawned and, and you're, you're looking at post-spawn and you're seeing a lot of little, little bitty minnows running around on top, a propeller bait was very effective. Another excellent choice and one that uh, uh, is super on this particular lake right here that I'm fishing just from past history is buzz bait. It just creates something that bass don't like. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, agitation, irritation, or a combination of both, but they do not like a buzz bait and they will flat bite it on a lot of lakes. It's especially good for covering more water than you can with these other two other baits over here. You can just throw it and wind it. It's no work to it, no fancy twitching or popping. Just throw it out and reel it in. Sometimes the speed is critical. If the water's real hot and the fish are sluggish, you may want to just barely crawl it on top of the water. If the fish are pretty aggressive and you're seeing them strike things every now and then, then wind it in a little bit faster because they're in a chasing mood. But the buzz bait is definitely a good choice. some of the most obvious fishing is real close to where you launch your boat. Early in the morning, them things get aggressive and bite top water. No, no bitty fish. I like to come out early and just put the boat in, start fishing a lot of times right where I launch. Just hit some of the points and little pockets real early in the morning. Well, in the summertime, they feed early. you got to get out on the water just as quick as you possibly can. Put you on a buzz bait or a spook or a pop bar, something like that where you can cover a lot of water and just turn the troll motor on and go down the shoreline for a little while, hitting points, go from point to point to point. This gives me an idea. When I get out real early like this and I throw top water for an hour or so, if I don't catch any, then the next day that tells me to fish down. Start throwing a plastic worm more. I'll go back and hit a lot of the same points because I know the fish are on points. Simply because it's that time of year. They've, they've moved out of the spawning areas and they've started congregating up toward closer to the deep water. There's another little fish. That's a pretty good little fish. You know, it's so many times your, your fishing is so obvious or so easy and we try to make it hard. Just put you on a buzz bait or a pretty good little bass right there. And just, you know, too many people come out here early in the morning and sometimes you just miss the easiest fishing there is. 
by running all over the lake. Not really, you know, having a good game plan to start out with. Now, I won't go way back in a little old cove like that this time of year. I might make a little quick pass around it to start with, but I'm just, you know, it's summertime, and you should know that fish aren't in the spawning grounds. They're going to be relating to the places that will congregate fish closer to the deep water. And it's just not time for them to be back there. This is a time of year that they relate to points and creek channels, underwater ridges, humps, fence rows, launching ramps, anything out of the ordinary but close to deep water. This is the time of day right here that I really enjoy fishing most. Topwater fishing always was one of my favorite ways of fishing. But in the summertime, it's just one of them types of fishing that's, it, it's, the timing is real critical. First hour in the morning, last hour in the evening. Maybe a good cloudy, rainy day, you can do it all day long, but they just don't remain as aggressive along, as long during the day when that water temperature is real high. Usually in a little dingier water lakes, it'll take a, a topwater bait that makes a little noise, like a, a boy howdy or something with propellers on each end of it. Other lakes, like Bull Shoals, Table Rock, real clear water lakes of spook, uh, something that don't make a lot of noise and has a very erratic action uh, from side to side will entice a lot more strikes than one with props. They don't really like a lot of noise on clear water lakes. Little popar is another excellent choice for top water fishing early in the morning. You get around some of them lakes that has a lot of vegetation in them, lily pads and or maybe milfoil or hydrilla or grass of some sort. A buzz bait is an excellent summertime choice early in the morning. Many of your, your backwater river areas, like the Arkansas River or the James River, uh, anytime you've got real shallow water river systems where your bass don't have structure to relate to, sometimes uh, top water can be your number one bait for the whole day long. All bodies of water are a little different. River systems especially, the fish just don't relate to uh, structure near as good as they do in lakes. So you'll be spending more time throwing at shallow water cover, rip wrap, uh, stump beds, cypress trees, anything you can find in the water. But usually that little key of having deep water close by is always uh, an important key, and even in the river systems. You may not know it, but the underwater channel is there. I know when I won the Bassmasters Classic up on the Ohio River uh, at Cincinnati, uh, I was churning mud with the trolling motor and catching my fish in a foot to two foot of water. I mean, it was really shallow. But the fish were relating to the deep ends of logs and, and little brush piles. And I was having to pitch a worm in there, and, and uh, if you got to looking real close, that you could tell that that's where the old channel used to be. But through the years, all the silt and stuff coming down the creek had silted it in. But all the fish would be on that channel side. There's one. Just come up and got that top line. I love this time of day. It's just a good, good time of day to come out and enjoy it. Boy, it's a feisty little day. Good day to come out and enjoy the early morning and have a few bites on top. People just don't know what they're missing when they sleep later nine o'clock. 
then they come out here and expect to catch fish. You got to get out here early to enjoy the, the good fishing. There are just so many different patterns in bass fishing. No matter whether it's spring, summer, or fall. These early morning patterns, these middle of the day patterns, these late in the evening patterns. Well, I'm going to get another one. Feels like a better fish than I thought it was. Right, I just got him hooked all over the side. I mean, to you now, he come up and got all of it. Pretty good little bass, though. Not too bad. That's fun fishing. See, there's always a pattern to everything. This whole bank down through here, I've had four or five nice fish this morning. I mean, in less than an hour's fishing time, and every one of them has been on the sides of one of these little points. I mean, there's, a, there's just a definite key to where every strike has been. So if you pay a real close attention, that'll help you to know when to speed that trolling motor up and move on and cover some bank and, and when to slow down and fish the good little stretches. Whoops, there was another little one. That was a real little one. This is probably my favorite of all topwater baits right here, a little pop R. A lot of times when you're when you're fishing topwater in the summertime, or well, any time of year really, uh, sometimes they want one that's got spinners on it, sometimes they want one that chugs, and other times they'll want that spook, a quiet, uh, soft action. You just kind of have to experiment. When I'm really working on a topwater pattern, I'll go out and I'll have all three tied on, one on every rod. Because sometimes they want them spinners, especially when I really like to throw a topwater bait that's got spinners on it's when you've got a lot of little bitty fry in the water. Little small fry. Right after the spawn, just seems like one with little bitty blades that don't make too much noise. It, it, it's just something about it that turns the trick. When you're out fishing and looking for bass and, and reading that shoreline and the type of cover you got, you know, check out the bank and just see what the lake has to offer. Not all lakes got these trees in them like this one does. And to me, the, right now, these trees are a hindrance. The fish ain't really relating to that brush. So I'm, I'm not paying any attention at all to the trees. I'm looking at that shoreline and what that shoreline's got to offer. Trees are just an added, an added bonus because what trees do is they, you know, it just gives you more cover in the water. You have more lay downs, you have logs to fish. But, a, but a, just so many times a tree is, as far as just throwing over at that tree and catching the fish, that just don't happen because it don't have the right kind of cover. It's just a, just a straight down stump. These fish are relating to points and they're relating to points where seven and, and uh, well really the ones that I've caught fish on have had 12 to 15 foot of water in there pretty close to that point to the side of it and that's what that's the whole key right here it's it's not the rock it's not the gravel it's that little bit of structure that's running in there close to that point we're way past the spawn here and yet these fish just haven't ganged up yet on on uh, structure they're just kind of scattered you've got a few fish it's going to stay in here for another month or two maybe. Right between them two, them three trees, boy, he jumped up there and got on that pop bar. He ain't no big one, but he's a nice boy. I mean, he got it too. Plum crossways in his mouth. That's what you call getting a mouthful of a topwater bait. 
too bad, little fish. There's another one. Just about the time I get ready to change. That's a pretty decent one. About the time I get ready to change my pattern, I get another box. Good grief, what a bajon. You know, sometimes you can just keep throwing a topwater plug and just keep catching fish on it, but that's a nice bass. Uh, you know, there's got to be a way to catch some big fish. And uh, so I'm going to move on and, and pull down here and run out a little bit of structure and see if we can't find some, some bigger fish on a worm. But right now, boy, this topwater fishing, I'll tell you what, I'd have to stay with it a while longer if I was uh, just out here fishing because this is fun, fun fishing. There's a lot of different ways to go about looking for fish in the summertime. Really, it's just like when you're when you're looking for bass. It's just like any other time of the year. One of your one of your main thoughts should always be cover. Uh, what kind of cover that the lake has to offer, whether it be grass, wood, uh, docks, whatever. Because bass are going to be around cover. I don't care where you go. So you have to look for cover. Number two ingredient, and probably one of the most important factors in all summertime bass fishing, is having some sort of structure around, either a road bed or a uh, no creek channel, uh, and when I say structure, anytime uh, I'm bass fishing, I always mean bottom change. I don't mean structure like brush or logs, I mean bottom change. And that's a key ingredient when looking for summertime bass because they nearly always are going to be out close to some kind of structure. Now there's different lakes, I have to admit, there's, there's lakes like Florida and uh, uh, Ross Barnett, lakes that have a lot of weedy vegetation and uh, lily pads and things like that where maybe your fish may not be relating to great uh, changes in the bottom, but there will always be deep water around when, you're, when you find fish in the summertime. I don't care what kind of cover they're on, there's going to be a, a uh, depth of water change somewhere involved. And that's one of the hardest things uh, to me about finding summertime bass because it is some of the best bass fishing there is. And you just have to spend a little more time at it. It's not quite as easy as going out there and just throwing at the banks and fishing the points. And uh, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. And it's also a little slower because you're probing in deeper water, especially when you've got uh, uh, water clarity like we have right here where it's not, uh, not too dirty. If the water's real dirty, then you might as well re relate back to your, your springtime tactics with the exception of having uh, some kind of uh, deeper water close at hand because your fish just aren't going to be very deep unless you've got real clear water. If it's real dirty, fish shallow year-round, just remember to look for structure close to it. But right now, I'm going with my number one theory in bass fishing. When you're fishing summertime, you better be fishing the bottom because it's the most consistent type of fishing there is. And there's always different patterns involved. That's, that's one thing about fishing the bottom and fishing uh, uh, deeper water. Uh, sometimes it may be on an open water point. Uh, other times you'll just be fishing maybe a ridge uh, that's got timber on it, which is identically, with, uh, this is what I have right here in this certain area. There's a, a creek channel drops off into deep water right there, and this is just a shallow ridge running out into the uh, main portion of the creek. It's got 15 to 17 foot of water on it, and we've got good heavy cover, uh, brush, and a lot of times in the middle of the day when your fish aren't real active, uh, they'll move up into these trees and just lay down amongst these trees down there in the shade somewhere between uh, uh, 10 foot and the bottom. They may not be right on the bottom. They'll just be laying in that heavy cover and that's what I'm looking for right here is just a, what I would call a good individual fish pattern. You know, maybe one fish in a big old heavy tree, sometimes two, but uh, when your fish aren't real active in the middle of the day, this is the kind of pattern you better have to fall back on right down in that heavy cover, and uh, uh, you know, it's just one fish every now and then. Nothing fast, but I'm also thinking big fish, good fish. There's nothing I'd rather do than get on a, on a little shallow uh, point, maybe dropping from 10, 12, 14 foot into, into 25 or 30 foot early in the morning and, and set that anchor out and, you know, just stick a bass every cast. Well, that's the way it used to be down on Toledo Bend. And we still run into good areas and good places like that. But fishing nowadays, especially in the summertime, lots of the time, 
it's just one here and one there and you just have to fish until you figure out the right pattern or maybe get in you a good area and get two or three bites and then you have to go somewhere else and uh, catch two or three more. It's not really schooled up type fishing. You know another key ingredient here to me would be a lot of bait or, or active bait fish maybe even a little little current. The current is another uh, feature in, in structure fishing that's that's very very important because so many of our lakes they generate current down there at the dam and when they're not generating current fish have a tendency to suspend even even more so and uh, it just makes them really hard to catch when you don't have current and yet boy once they start generating that water down there at the dam it puts them fish right on that structure you know, when you're learning how to fish timber, one of the key things about fishing timber is how to read timber. And when you've got big trees like this right here, that usually means that there's some sort of a, uh, a drop off or a channel there real close. And then when you've got all these little stobs sitting right in just inside the middle of them, that usually means there's a little shallow bar uh, where the water is shallower. And right here in the, inside all them little stobs, it's only about eight or 10 foot deep and it drops right off into 22 here where I'm sitting in the boat. And you can kind of follow the there's a fish too. Looking good one. All right, he's near as good as I thought he was, but he'll do. Long, lanky fish anyway. Pretty little bass. But anytime you got that uh, uh, little shallow water ridge and it drops off like that, that, I mean, that's just a good place to fish. It's something different. And you want to stay here, keep your boat out in the deeper water. When I'm fishing timber, I usually try to keep my boat deep and fish around the perimeter of the, the shallow water. You know, when, you, when you're looking at a little flat gravel point like that right there, it really just don't look too good at all, but it, it's your spots that has that definite underwater change. I don't care what they look like up on the bank. And usually the flatter they are and the uglier they are on the bank, usually when you get out away from the bank about 100 yards or so, that's where some of your best structure in the whole lake is. So I really prefer, especially in summertime, to fish long flat points over the steep points. You know, deep cranking is a good way to catch a lot of fish, a lot of hard work. When I'm fishing tournaments, you know, work's the name of the game, so I don't mind pulling out a deep diving crankbait and working ridges and humps with a crankbait because there's times when fish definitely want something that's ricocheting off of an item like a stump or a log or a rock and they may not be as aggressive on a worm. They want that thing banging off of something and moving violently to one side and that's what makes them hit it. Nearly always I like to keep the boat where I can kind of parallel down the side of a bar. That way I can key my bait in the right depth of water that I feel like the fish are going to be in. And uh, that thing ricochets off, ricochets off a stump or a rock or something every now and then, pause it. And a lot of times when I find fish on a ridge, I'll work that ridge just back and forth, back and forth. There is times when even them great big divers, the, the deep 20s and the, the dredges and the, the big maxi R's, it really gets down there in the deep water. And when you find a key spot, if you ever find a spot that holds fish, put a marker buoy out on it. Some of the best crankbait fishermen I know, they'll have a marker buoy sitting right on the end of a little underwater bar. And they'll just get way backward, make long casts past the marker buoy and get that thing down there so that it'll hit bottom right there in that key little area because fish have a tendency to set up on a key spot with a crankbait just like they do with a plastic worm. What it is, it just gives you another lure to work a certain little specific place with. You want to get him down there real deep. Some, some people get down there, you know, they'll get down kneeling real and get it on down there deeper. But usually, myself, everybody has their own preferences, and there's one thing that I've always believed in. If you enjoy fishing plastic worms more than you enjoy fishing crankbaits, then you're gonna find a lot more bass on a worm than you will a crankbait. You know, that's one reason why the ordinary bass fishermen don't catch a lot of fish on baits like these, because to, 
this this lure is not like going out there and throwing a hot spot or a, a, maybe a little 6A bomber on the rocks where you just fish a lot of rocks and catch a fish. Deep diving crankbaits are designed to fish specific species, uh, pieces of cover. Like a, a, lot of, a lot of ridges and bars, they'll run down through there. You know, you'll be sitting deep throwing shallow and all of a sudden that deep water will make a little niche or a little, little hook on the side of a point and there'll be maybe three or four stumps on that little edge. And that's where these things really produce. It's the same identical type places that you fish a plastic worm. It's just that there's times when they don't want a worm, which is rare, I prefer them to bite worms, but when they don't want a worm and you gotta trigger them into biting, a crankbait will trigger them into biting. Rip wrap and, and uh, rocks on the end of bridges are also good places to check with a crankbait when you're looking for fish. A lot of times if they start generating water down to the dam or wind starts washing through just right, it'll create a current that'll come around them rocks and sometimes they'll really stack up on them things. See, all these places that I'm telling you about are specific light, specific type places. Like right here, you got the old creek channel swinging down alongside this bluff, and under the water off the end of this bluff right here, there'll be a point, an extension that might, there's no telling how far it may run out through there. And, uh, you know, it's a good place for fish to stack up on, so it's another choice for your crankbait. Now, this little area here is kind of unique. Anytime you've got a little gap between two islands like this, it's naturally a good place to look for fish. What makes this a little better right now is that the wind's blowing real hard, blowing right through this cut, and it might create a little bit of current where we might catch a fish on a crankbait. Summertime current, a lot of times, is a key ingredient to your cranking. If you don't have current, you just don't catch many bass. Let's move on. No need wasting a lot of time here. Just that one little old cut's all there was. If they're not in the bottom of that cut where that current's coming through, you might as well move on. Let's go hit a worm. See if we can find a worm bass. The number one lure for producing bass in the summertime is a plastic worm. One of my favorites is a six inch or eight inch squirm worm. Just a straight worm with a small curl tail. This is one that I rely on a lot of times when I'm unsure of what worm that I want to use. Just a regular old straight worm. Another worm that produces well for me is a pro tail worm. This is the type worm that's especially effective in off-colored water, water depths less than 15 feet deep, and fishing it around timber. When you're fishing clear water lakes or lakes that have uh, a lot of vegetation in them and you're, you're uh, fishing in the grass, maybe scattered weeds. That's when I'll throw more of the, the uh, ribbon tail plastic worms, like a triple ripple. Now when I fish a lake like this lake right here, it's noted for having a lot of big bass in it. It's got a lot of heavy trees, heavy wood cover, and you're having to fish right down in that cover. That's when I'm gonna reach for a worm that's really got some bulk, got some size to it. I'm looking for bigger fish, so I'm gonna always have a big worm on one rod. If you run into a bunch of little 12-inch schooling bass on a, on a ridge or 13-inch schooling bass and, and they're out in open water, you're not going to catch many of them on a great big worm like this. So you'll want to swap back and use a smaller design. But worms will definitely always be one of your best choices for fishing in the summertime. Come on out of there. Come on, come on. Well, I'll be dead gone. If that don't beat anything. I see him. He's a good one. I mean, he's a good one. See the fish? Yeah, I see the fish. Six pounder. Here he comes. He's going to jump. There ain't a darn thing I can do about it. He has my line so wrapped up that I can't even move him. If he comes up there and jumps again, I'm going to lip him. 
I mean, he has got that line so tight, it will not budge. Whoops, there you come a little bit. I knew he was still on there. Come on. He can take line, but I can't get much line back. Whoops, I got him back up to it. Come on, come on, come on. I'm getting it all back. Yeah, I got it all back without the fish. Well, bless your heart! Come out of that tree. Come on up. Got me around the limb down there. Well, I'll be John Brown. All right, King. Good fish. Pretty good bass. Come on, baby. That's a nice bass. That's the first one I caught off one of these little points. Pretty good little fish. Now, that there was in about 10 foot, dropping into 18. You know, I fished this little point once today. It's one of them little classic points to me. It's got a got a road running right out off the end of it here. And on both sides of this point, on one side of it here, it drops right straight into the river channel. It's got real deep water. And then over on the other side there, it drops into that creek. And it's got beautiful structure on it. And I just decided to come back and try it again because so many times when you find a, a, just a perfect spot and you think it ought to have fish on it, you should come back and give it another whirl, even when you, uh, you know, if you didn't get a bite, because a lot of times a little storm coming in and a little wind blowing in here, just something to change the conditions will make a fish bite. I thought maybe there might be some fish back here. That's another thing about summer fishing, timing. Oh, timing is, is very important. Fish may be biting back here from 10 to, uh, 10 to 2. And, you know, when you find a good hole that you think is good and, and it looks good to you and a classic, I mean, just a classic fishing spot, I know a lot of people say, well, what's a classic fishing spot? I wouldn't know one if it jumped up and bit me. If it looks good, it's got good underwater structure, water color's right, you know, more than likely there's bass there somewhere. I know it takes, it takes me a lot of times uh, couple days before I really get on what the fish are doing or maybe what uh, what kind of water they're using. But I know summertime is structure fishing. And sooner or later, if I stay with it, I'm going to find fish on it. And when I do, there'll be the better fish in the lake. There'll be better numbers and there'll be better quality. You know, this is one time of year that I really don't uh, uh, pay a whole lot of attention to water temperature because once it reaches uh, somewhere in the low to, low to mid 80s, that pretty well tells me that, that your, your, your normal old bank fishing is over with. I mean, your fish are gonna have moved offshore, out away from the bank, and they're gonna be relating to, to some other type of underwater structure. And that's where I see more people making their summertime mistakes than any place else, is they, they wanna fish everything related to the bank. And that's, that's fine, early in the morning fish still use that type of water relating to the bank. You know, if there's a deep water creek channel or river channel or something coming in there close to that bank, they'll use it for the first couple hours. And then about, oh, eight o'clock in the morning, once that sun gets up there real good, they have a tendency to, to just move off that stuff and suspend. And uh, people say, you know, boy, I had good luck this morning the first two hours. And then that's it, they just quit biting. Well, they don't always just quit. That's when you want to move out further offshore and, and have a t uh, look for something that doesn't get fished very often. Maybe that's the reason that, that these places are better uh, up in the day. Uh, that maybe other people just don't fish them or don't know how to fish them, and so they don't fish them right. But I find that fish bite all day long in the summertime. Naturally, early and late's better, but even during the middle of the day, if you find the right water, you're going to catch fish, and usually they'll be big fish. Bass. I'm gonna 
you just ain't gonna give up. Stay with that. There's so many times bass fishing when that's just what you're doing. You're just you're hunting a pattern that will just produce one fish every now and then, but he'll be a good fish like that fish right there. And that's one of the things I've established. Hadn't found no great numbers of fish, but just a good pattern. looking for fish, I've talked about looking for things that are definite and different. And that good fish there just came off of an old tree line. It's just a tree line that runs out off the point of an island and it runs out and drops off into the creek channel itself. And that tree line really was the outstanding thing there. The creek might be used as a migration point coming into that tree line, but I was just working down that tree line out to where it joined the creek and the fish was in about 12 foot of water suspended down in a tree. There's just so many times in summertime bass fishing that your fish will suspend and brush because maybe the, maybe the pH is bad or maybe the bait's not very deep and it's laying up in the tops of them trees and, and they just don't go down and relate to the bottom. And this is really one of the most difficult times there is to catch bass. And so many times it's just putting it in a lot of trees but staying close to some kind of bottom structure and just putting it in that cover and just go from tree to tree to tree. There's one down in that tree. Come on, come on, just keep pressure on him. Come on, come on. Come on, there he is. Finally come out of there. Boy, he is black. He has been suspended in that in that tree. Look how black that fish is. Now that's the first bite I've had on a jig. But a lot of times when they're feeding on bluegill or something and they're suspended in brush, they'll just get that thing on the fall and a jig will do a better job than a worm. That was a good fish. I might ought to have been throwing that jig a little more often. These fish can just, they can be so many places when they're suspended like this. Got a million trees from the bee in. And if they're not on a definite pattern, like certain tree lines or, I mean, if it's just not something that you can completely pattern, boy, it can be hard just wandering around. You know, so far I've pretty well figured out I can, if I stay close to points or close to tree lines, I'm subject to get a bite. But I don't know exactly how far in the woods on a tree line or how far out on a point. They've been anywhere from 12 to 40 foot. That's what makes it interesting. One of the types of structures that I always look for when I'm fishing summertime patterns is is an open water pattern where I ain't got any trees around. I'm just fishing a, a point here where a, a channel comes in here close and makes a little hook in on this point and it drops straight out of three and four foot of water to 30, 35 foot. And I'm gonna follow this ledge all the way out to, to where it drops off into the deep water. And one of the most effective ways to fish one of these is with a Carolina rig. And that's where you've, you've got your weight uh, two or three feet up above your worm. I use a big, big heavy sinker and then you tie a swivel in your line and use a 17 pound test main line so if you get hung up, you don't uh, lose your sinker and swivel. All you'll lose is your hook and your worm. And it's uh, become a very effective technique for catching bass in, in bass tournaments, I guess because you can, you can cover so much more water with it. You stay in contact with the bottom a little better. Uh, in, in, in lakes that has current and milfoil or some kind of grass on the bottom down there, it allows your worm to float free up off the bottom. And you work it very much just like you do a Texas rig. It's just a lift and bounce it along slow and, and let your weight sink back to the bottom. And uh, it's just a real effective way for fishing open water. One of my favorites. 
Now I have a little better luck with the Carolina rig when I'm fishing it from the, the deep down to the shallow. And when I'm looking for the suspended fish, I want to throw a Texas rig. There's one right there. There he comes out. Must be a little brush pile down there. He was so far down in that brush, he just, just, come on in here. He was down in a tree. Ouch! That fish has got little sores on his sides. That Carolina rig is, it, it, it really is a, a method that you should learn to use because I know too many people that don't even don't even fish with Carolina rig at all, and I've really become sold on it. One of the hardest things in locating bass is getting started. How to select the proper area, or how do you select areas to look for bass? And the way I do it is I try to spend at least one day in one area. When I put my boat in, that's pretty well the area that I'm going to fish. And if I'm looking for worm bass, then I'll start out by selecting areas that have a major tributary in the mouth of it. Now right here, if you'll look real close, you'll see that this is one of the major coves on this little arm right here. And what I'm really looking for here is a lot of potential, a lot of different possibilities. And here I have a, the old creek channel that swings right across the mouth of this, and a lot of times that's one of the most important factors is the location of the river channel. Now I've also got one, two, three, four different points to look at. I know you might say that's a lot, but it's not really a lot because I'm going to fish key areas on these points. On this specific point right here, you can just follow this ledge right out alongside this, this uh, point and follow the old river edge right out through here. And that way I'll work a main, that's what I would call a main lake point. And I would use a worm. Now it does have topwater potential. Uh, it has potential for a lot of things, but mainly this is what I would call a good worm area. If that's not any good, then I would move on inside here because I've got a secondary point with a road bed coming out on it. It's still got good deep water right here where these contour lines run close together. And that gives me another uh, type point to look at because a lot of times there's a, there's a big difference in a main lake point and a secondary point. Then if I still haven't caught a fish, I'll even move on back in here on this center point because it's it's the main point in between two creeks and I would work around the perimeter of it. Now I would think of this one here probably better being a, a, a good spot with a topwater early in the morning because it's a little bit far back in the creek and once bass have spawned and came out of all these coves they like to move out here in this portion in the mouth of a pocket. And then over here you've got the same thing. You've got another main lake point really You've kind of got two of them. You've got a point here, an indention in the center, and another point here, and you've also got an old road bed running across the face of it. Now, this old road may be in 40 or 50 foot of water, but it still gives you a definite edge where you can fish both sides of that road. You know, if the fish are suspended maybe in, in timber or something, and uh, it, it gives them that edge that you really need for uh, a good school or concentration of bass. And it also gives you these heavy trees around the face of it. But to me, that is a prime worm spot. Now, another spot, and this is one that I found, uh, or, or I'm gonna go definitely go look at because it is a, a what I would call a classic wormhole. You've got the uh, main creek channel coming all the way across this creek right here. Now, if you'll look real close right here in the center, you'll see that there is a little bitty island or a little bitty underwater hump right there and it also has a little small slough that tucks around in behind it so that tells me it has deep water here and it has deep water around here and this point should be a super spot and uh, I mean if I didn't catch any fish there and I didn't catch any fish on these points right here then I would probably go out in the middle of the lake and look at an underwater ridge uh, or some different uh, type, totally different type of worm structure. Maybe a clean water point or a clean water uh, bar uh, or a hump that doesn't have any trees on it. I'd want something just totally uh, barren of cover except maybe some bottom cover and yet I'd have a good sharp little break on the bottom down there. And you know, I'm sure that if I fish these places right here properly with a worm, 
and take my time. Now, it may take me all day to fish these areas. Don't be afraid to spend the whole day working these areas uh, and these, these points right here and looking for these fish because a lot of times, you know, finding the fish also means figuring out what mood they're in or what lure you're needing to use or what a technique you're having to use to catch these fish because there's lots and lots of times that I go through an area and don't catch a fish and then when I finally do get on the right little tip, uh, trick to making these fish take the bait or maybe the right worm weight, the, the right speed of the sink, uh, and then I go back to an area that I've already fished even though I didn't catch any and go back through there and find the bass. So. You know, it, it takes time to find these fish. You can't just do it in, in uh, a half a day. You've got to spend time. We talked about areas on the map that I would use for finding fish worm fishing. Crankbait fishing is a little bit differently because number one, you, don't, you can't hardly fish areas that have a whole lot of heavy timber sticking out of the water with big crankbaits. So when I'm looking for fish with a diving crankbait, a deep running crankbait, a lot of times I'll find, I want to find an area that is where two sections of a lake join. Like you've got a, a river coming down here, you've got a major creek coming out here, and they join up, and this creates areas that current have a tendency to move around. And you want to find little underwater bars or ridges, like this main lake point right here, where it sticks out in the lake, there's usually always little drops somewhere around this point. And when, what you do is you see these contour lines, when they tighten up real tight together, and usually it'll be around like right here, right on the inside edge of this point where they tighten together. Now this may be 50 yards off the bank, so don't get confused. I'm not talking about fishing right up against the shore. I'm talking about out in this open water, you'll find a little hook or a little section of uh, bottom that has some brush or stumps on it. and. What I normally do is just take the big crankbait and I'll work the whole face of this area. And if I feel some cover or some heavy brush, I'll turn the boat around and come back around here and crank it again because cranking in the summertime is always specific little spots. And that would be a key one right there. Another type of crankbait fishing that uh, can be real important this time of year is the shallow runners, the ones that's got the, the wide lip and beat and bang around on the wood and don't get hung up. And when I'm using them, I'll look for a totally different type of water. I'll normally go back in the back of a, of a creek and select areas like this where the rip wrap uh, he, is here on the end of this bridge. Uh, I'm looking for a little more off-color water, and I'm sure the water's probably going to be dingier back in here. And I'll also crank this channel back in here where it runs back down through these trees. And I'm looking for areas that are two to five feet deep, have uh, quite a bit of uh, stumps and heavy stuff dropping into the creek channel itself. Two to three, four foot deep, boom, drops right into 10 or 12 foot where the old creek is. Now these are areas that, that fish will stack up on right after the spawn, and that's kind of a early summertime pattern, and, but you never know, it'll last all summer long at times. One of the most important parts of summer fishing is trying to establish that early, early morning pattern. And a lot of times, uh, that's top water to me, top water and buzz baits. Now, when I do a lot of top water fishing, the number one factor I think about is water clarity. I want clearer water. I just found that I catch a lot more fish on top water if the water is pretty clear. Now, that would automatically put me in this lower section of the lake because I want to see the clearest water on the lake to start with, and that's going to be my first choice. Now, my choice of fishing water, a lot of times, uh, rather than fishing the heavy timber and the heavy wood, I want to find rock, riprap, uh, bluffs, and I would key on little creeks maybe like these right here that do not have a lot of, of standing timber in them, but yet I have a lot of little side points. You see I've got one, two, three there, two here, and then I might move around here on this bluff and uh, check it out to see if there's any suspended fish along this bluff where, that would come out of the deeper water to hit a spook or a topwater of that nature. And uh, mainly with a topwater bait or a buzz bait, it's just a matter of coming in and fishing a lot of bank. I like to take a buzz bait and just put it on and just spend 30 minutes nonstop trolling up and down the bank to see what kind of fish or see if I can get any fish to come up and look at it. And then if I don't get any strikes, say in a real clean pocket, I'll just crank up and run across the lake over here and, and check out this little clean pocket right quick 
and fish the points maybe in this timbered cove and you know just do little small things little small areas because that's important in topwater fishing you get back in a big old creek like this boy and you just waste your whole early morning period and that's the that is the key top water time so fish small coves small pockets small points or several little points that are close to each other and this this way you can cover a little more water and you spend your time more efficiently because boy that early morning gets away from you in a hurry and it's that's the time of day that i really hate to miss you know as tough as these fish get after about seven o'clock in the morning i don't doubt what a guy couldn't catch a bunch of these fish at night on a on a worm or a uh a rattle claw or a jig or something of that nature. When I'm night fishing, I really like to fish this kind of point right here. I like little steep rock points that don't have a whole lot of timber on them. Got deep water close at hand. And them fish will come out of that deep water and they'll get up on these little points at night, even though you can't catch nothing on them in the daytime. So many of our lakes uh, across the United States daytime worm fishing or daytime fishing in the summertime period is just not good. Come out of there. Don't you come off. Georgia, I finally got one out of them trees. <laughs> you don't know how many I've had on and lost, and I finally whooped one of them. Boy, when they get you down in that big water. Now see, when you take that big worm and you just keep putting it in heavy cover, and this fish right here was suspended out here over 40 foot, but there's a, there's a definite line of trees coming across here, and you know, when you find that outstanding edge and the right cover on that edge, that's the kind of fish you'll catch. That was a good fish. I know that a lot of the lakes that people fish are not like this lake. There's a lot of lakes that have different kinds of cover. Uh, there's a lot of things that we haven't fished that uh, you ha might have on your lake. You might have boat docks, you might have lily pads. There's just a million different types of cover. And the main thing that I've tried to teach you is to think structure. Think deep water, uh, think deep water close to shallow water. Uh, just think about the area of the lake that you're looking for fish because the number one factor in summertime bass fishing is having the big water close, uh, you don't want the fish all, you don't want to spend all your time way back in a cove or in a creek. You want to fish the outermost portions of pockets uh, if you're looking for deep water fish especially or concentrations of fish. And there's a lot of lures that we haven't talked about that you can use. If your lake has a lot of little 12 and 13 inch fish in it, then you might want to use a split shot rig. Uh, anything to catch smaller bass. Usually when I think small fish, I think smaller lures. But I still fish the kind of water and the kind of places and the kind of areas that we have looked at. And another key ingredient that maybe I may have failed to mention is shade. If you've got a lot of boat docks on your lake and that's the only shade you have or maybe that's the only cover you have, then that's the type of areas that you should spend your time fishing. And not only that, number one key in summertime bass fishing in a lot of instances is time of day. Early morning is the most critical time. So get out there early and enjoy that peace and quiet that you get early in the morning. You can uh, beat a few of the other boats out on the lake and uh, normally you can get some good early morning top water fishing. And I hope that uh, with a lot of the things that I've said in this uh, video will help improve your bass fishing because every one of them, it took me a long time to learn them.
We hope you've enjoyed this presentation as much as we have in bringing it to you. Our goal is to provide you with the most on-target outdoor videos available to the sportsman today. We would also like to take this opportunity to invite you to visit the Bass Pro Shops National Headquarters Showroom in Springfield, Missouri. Outdoor World is a sportsman's showcase. 150,000 square feet of today's finest outdoor products for the serious sportsman and fun-loving outdoor family. And it's all set in an atmosphere you simply won't find anywhere else with an indoor waterfall, huge fresh and saltwater aquariums, a full-size two-story log cabin, and the largest collection of trophy game and fish mounts you'll find on display anywhere, plus much more. There's even a fresh seafood restaurant, snack bar, and barber shop to make your visit more enjoyable. The fisherman will find all of his old favorites along with the most up-to-date selection of modern high-tech tackle available at Outdoor World. In or out of season, you'll always find thousands of rods, reels, and aisle after aisle of today's most asked for lures filling the shelves of the Outdoor World Fishing Department. And we've even opened our White River Fly Shop to fulfill all the needs of the ardent fly fishermen. The Bass Pro Shops catalogs bring the greatest selection of top quality outdoor products currently available right into your home. And as close as a phone call away. For our latest catalog, call 1-800-BASS-PRO. The catalog is free and so is the phone call. We want to thank you for letting us help you have fun in the outdoors.